Hello, my name is Noah Elkreef, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how to deal with being unattractive or ugly. So before I talk about this topic and how to deal with it, I just want to be clear that I don't see that there isn't really such a thing as unattractive or ugly, but I'll get to that later on in the video. I just want to start with that. I'm just using the word unattractive and ugly because this is how people think about it, right? So there are a few different ways to become happy with your looks, okay with your looks, and at peace with your looks. So if the first way that I describe or the first way I tried to help you with it doesn't seem to resonate with you or help you, be patient because one of the other ways might be the right fit for you. So the first thing to see if you think that you are unattractive, okay, the first thing to see is that you might not actually be. Okay? And what I mean by that is simply, we often base our opinion of our appearance based on two things. One, what we see on TV, where we happen to be, and the other is our immediate surroundings. Right? So, the way to see that you're not necessarily unattractive is by noticing that each person has different taste, right? So if, um, if there's, let's say you watch TV and there's, you're watching a fashion show and there are models, some people really like the, how they look and they think they're the most beautiful people. And other people would say, wow, they are way too skinny. Other people would say they're way too tall. Maybe they look awkward. Some people might say, yeah, but they don't smile. They have no beauty behind their smile or their eyes. So just because one type of person thinks they're attractive doesn't mean they actually are attractive because many people would think they're not, right? So sometimes people like people, some people in some places are attracted to others who have more weight who have bigger legs or bigger butt or bigger stomach or whatever, right? And in other places, other types of people in other cultures are attracted to skinnier people. You may be in a society that, or in an immediate community or school that seems to value skinny, but that doesn't mean you're unattractive. It just means the people around you don't like it, right? And maybe you're pale. Well, some people like pale girls or guys, and some people like uh, dark ones. I mean, in, in some societies, we try to tan to make ourselves dark. And in other societies, in Asia, it's, it's uh, deemed that you're bad to be dark because it used to be, I think, uh, the laborers, the people in the fields got dark. So they want to be pale. In, in each society, it's different. Some people, uh, each, each person's nose some people will like it and some people won't, right? Some people say one nose is boring, the other one says it has character, one person says this nose is too big, the other one says it's too small. Everyone has a different view. So if you like a song, right, and you think it's, or not let's say a song, let's say if you like a shirt and you think it's beautiful, does that mean it's actually beautiful? No, the other person might not like it, right? It doesn't mean the shirt is beautiful just because you like it. Other people might not. The shirt has nothing to do with our stories about it. Or let me put it differently. If I go like this, is this a good movement or a bad movement? Is it a pretty movement or an ugly movement? Well, it's neither. You might tell a story that it's pretty or ugly, but that's not part of the, the movement itself. That exists in your own imagination. There's no pretty or ugly on the hand movement itself. Right? If you look at my nose, is it pretty or ugly? You can. So when I ask that question, you see what goes on in your head is unconsciously you, you develop a picture in your head. What is the perfect nose that I was trained to believe? And then how does this nose compare to the perfect nose? But there is no such thing as a perfect nose because each one has a different view. You were trained that this nose, uh, some picture is perfect, right? Some picture of a nose is perfect but somebody else has a different one. But beyond all that, the fact that each one has a different view, what I'm trying to say here is that none of those views exist in reality. 
So Pretty or Ugly doesn't exist on my nose. You can't find Pretty or Ugly here. You can find shapes. But then in your own imagination, separate from the nose, is, is ugly or pretty, not part of the nose itself. Ugly and pretty don't exist in real life. They exist in our imagination. So if I say find a dragon in this room, you have to go into your imagination because you can't find it in reality. And if I say find ugly or pretty here, you have to go into your imagination because it's not in reality. Right? So each person has a different view of whether this is ugly or pretty. Ugly or handsome, ugly or cute, whatever. But none of that exists in reality. And if two people disagree, which, who's right? Whose is true? Even if, let's say, oh, a thousand people look at this nose, and 999 say it's ugly, and one says it's beautiful, which is it? It still doesn't exist in reality. It still doesn't exist as part of the nose. It has nothing to do with it. Okay? Does that make sense to you? That first of all, ugly and pretty don't exist in reality, and second of all, we don't even know what ugly or pretty is because everyone has a different definition based on our culture, based on uh, what magazines and TV where we're exposed to, and all of that sort of thing. The second thing we're going to look at here is probably more helpful than that, but that might be useful for you, and that is to really look at what do you want most in life. So when we think we're unattractive or ugly, we tend to focus a lot of our mental energy and perhaps physical energy on wanting to change that, wanting to change how we look. But let me ask you a question. If I gave you two options, keep your looks exactly as they are, and be incredibly happy, joyous, free, fulfilled, never have an insecurity again, never f worry about your looks, never think you're ugly, and feel free in every moment, okay, and get the guys and or the girls or whatever, okay, or change your looks and match your definition of beautiful, but you have insecurities, worries, anxiety, sadness, anger, and everything in between. You're suffering. Which would you choose? So I'll say that again. If you could match your definition of ugly, keep your current looks, but be incredibly happy and fulfilled and joyous, or two, match your definition of beautiful and be incredibly unhappy, which of those options would you choose? And I'm not saying those are your options. I'm saying, if those, hypothetically, were the only two possibilities, which would you choose? Most of us, if we're willing to really look honestly and be open to that question, is we'd rather be happy and fulfilled and be what we think of as ugly versus be beautiful if we're unhappy all the time. And what that means is we actually want to be happy more than we want to be beautiful. And that's a really important distinction and a really important discovery. Because as long as you think you want to be beautiful more than anything else, you're going to be in a prison. right? But if you recognize you want to be happy more than you want to be beautiful, then you can ask the next question, which is so important, and that is, can beauty make me happy? And does ugly make me unhappy? Okay, that's the question we're going to look at right now. So. Would beauty, does beauty, make us happy? Well, think of anyone you want who you think is incredibly beautiful. Are they happy? Has, has no person that's beautiful not, uh, that you think of as beautiful not killed themselves? Is everyone that's beautiful uh, not have anxiety about the future? Not have insecurities about their appearance? Not worry what others think? If you match your definition of beautiful, or anyone that matches your definition of beautiful, Guess what? They still have anxiety about money, anxiety about their career, anxiety about uh, everything, right? Or they still have insecurities about their stomach or their face or their hair. They still worry about whether others love them. They still have anger. They still have judgments. They still have all of that. But on top of that, okay, they also have, if they uh, think that they're beautiful or they get complimented a lot, 
And if every time someone compliments them, they say, yay, I'm beautiful, and that makes them feel good, well, guess what? That means they have to worry about others' opinions, right? If a compliment means I'm great, then an insult means I'm not. If my beauty means I'm happy, then I'm going to be afraid of not having beauty. But since beauty is, is not real, it's not like we can touch it, right? A nose is real, a chest is real, a stomach is real, but the idea that it is good or bad is completely imaginary, right? So let's say, here's a, here's a nose, good and bad don't exist on it, I, that's in my imagination. Here's a movement, the movement is real, but good or bad is in my imagination. So if, if let's say I'm, I'm a model, Right? And, every, and everyone seems to think I'm beautiful. And every time I get picked for a casting, I say, yay, I'm so great, I'm so beautiful, I'm so glad they noticed. Well, then guess what? If I don't get hired for the casting, if I don't get picked, if I get rejected, well, then I'm going to feel like crap. I'm going to feel hurt. I'm going to feel sad. So if I feel sad when someone rejects me or insults me or doesn't pick me, then I have to have anxiety about their opinions. I have to have anxiety about whether I get the job, get, uh, get the guy, get the girl, get the smile, get the notice, right? The noticing as they walk past us. So they live with anxiety. You have this idea, perhaps, that if I was beautiful, everything would be great. But if you matched your idea of beautiful, you'd still have all the same thoughts in your head. You would still have all the thoughts that create anxiety, anger, worry, insecurity, and sadness, and guilt, and everything in between. Changing your physical appearance doesn't have the ability to delete the thoughts in your head that make you unhappy. Right? So, on top of that, okay, on top of that, if you match your definition of beauty, and let's say your immediate circle or your community or your culture's definition of beauty, there's other things that could occur, okay? And that is that maybe you get, uh, maybe you have more guys to choose from or more girls to choose from because a larger percentage like you. But that means you're getting the guys or the girls that care about looks more than anything else. And then you have to worry about do they like me for my looks or do they like the real me? Right? Then you have to worry about being used, because if you have the looks, then people will use you as a trophy wife or trophy guy, or to brag about to their friends. You have to worry about whether they care about you. You have to worry about all that stuff. But, and then on top of that, a lot of the times, if you have the looks that other people want, there's more distractions in your life. Right? So when you're trying to study for school, or progress in your career, or whatever, right? you have maybe more people trying to get you to go out with them, or more things like that. Like if you're in high school, maybe if you match your high school's idea of beautiful, more people are going to invite you out to parties. More people are going to invite you here or there. So you're likely to less, spend less time studying, perhaps. Less time on your schoolwork. Less time doing what you really love. Isn't that possible? It's more than just possible. It's likely. It's, it's probable. So, the reason that I say that is because as long as you believe beauty makes you happy, then you'll feel like I'm at a disadvantage because of my looks. But you're not at a disadvantage. How do you know? So, so, if, so maybe you have less guys or girls to choose from. Less will like you because you don't match your particular culture's idea of beautiful. But how many guys or girls do you need? <laughs> First of all, a guy or girl can't make you happy. Because no matter what guy or girl comes to you and says they love you and wants to be with you, it doesn't have the ability to delete the thoughts in your head. It can't delete the thoughts that create your anxiety, worry, insecurity, sadness, judgment, and everything in between. Right? If it did, then everyone in a relationship or everyone who was loved would be happy, which isn't the case. And you would see if you've had any of those experiences. But on top of that, you only need one. Even if, even if a guy or girl could make you happy, which they can't, it's not like you need every guy or girl to like you. If there's a hundred, you need all hundred to like you. If even one likes you, you know that they like you for the real you. They're not using you for your looks. They're not using you for sex. They're not using you. Because you don't match their societies or their culture's idea of beautiful. So then you're more free. You're, you're more likely to get someone that's real. You're more likely to make friends with people who aren't shallow. Perhaps. Right? Your friends like you. you. You get friends who have the same hobbies or interests as opposed to, to friends who 
just want to be seen with someone beautiful or want to be seen with someone popular or want to think of themselves as good so they leech on to the people who are seemingly more beautiful. Maybe, I don't know, there's so many different things that could occur from your look. So if you discover, I want to be happy more than anything else, I want to be happy even more than I want to change my looks, right? We, we don't want to be, let me put that differently. If I tell you I really, really want success, I don't want success. I want to be happy and I just have this belief success will make me happy. If I really want a smoothie, I don't want a smoothie. I want pleasure and I happen to believe a smoothie will give me pleasure. So if I say I really want to be beautiful, I don't. I want to be happy and I just have this idea beauty will make me happy. Right? So here's the question. Is your looks, are your looks, is your appearance, helpful or hurtful towards your happiness in the long run? How could you possibly know? How do you know if you look different, you wouldn't, it'd be harder for you to get the guys that were perfect for you, harder to get the girls that were perfect for you? How do you know you wouldn't, there wouldn't be a stigma against you, like in your job, they wouldn't promote you because they think you're stupid because you have the looks? Or how do you know? Many times when people are attractive according to their culture, People are intimidated by them, so guys don't go up to them, girls don't go up to them because they're intimidated. Or maybe sometimes it's harder to make friends when you're seemingly attractive because um, because people have this jealousy towards you or it's harder for them to open up because it's because they're intimidated, right? When you're less intimidating, if you if people don't think you're as attractive, then they open up to you easier, they're, they're nicer to you. It happens all the time. So is your looks good or bad for your happiness in the long run? Is it possible that your looks will help you make the friends that are perfect for you, the guy that's perfect for you? Or even deeper than that, even more real than that, is it possible that the fact that you didn't like your looks could lead you to a video like this, which helps you to question the thoughts in your head and the beliefs that you have, which leads you to so much more peace and happiness? See, most people never look at the thoughts in their head, right? We just distract ourselves in every moment. If we have anxiety, if we have stress, if we have worry, we don't look at those thoughts and question them and try to lose them. We just, more TV, more movies, more music. We just never allow ourselves to be by ourselves with no distractions. But somehow, perhaps your idea that you're, be, you're unattractive, that has led you, that was the catalyst, that was what motivated you to really look at the thoughts going on in your head and lead you to this video which could lead you to then saying, well, what creates my anxiety? What creates my anger? If I can lose this, I can lose any form of suffering, which means you're at an advantage for being at peace and happy in your life. Do you see that? Your appearance doesn't determine whether you're happy or not. Thoughts do. If you believe thoughts, they will make you unhappy no matter what your appearance is. If your appearance made you unhappy, your appearance directly caused your unhappiness and sadness, well then you would be forced to have that feeling in every single second that your appearance was the same. But is that true? Is that the case? No. In any moment that you're distracted from your thoughts, you're already fine. You're already happy. If you, you, in the moment that you eat your favorite food, are you sad? No. Why? Your appearance is still the same, but you're distracted from your thoughts. In the moment that something juicy happens or something dramatic happens in your favorite show or movie, are you sad in that moment? No. Why? Because you're distracted from your thoughts. If your nose made you unhappy, then you would feel that in every moment. But the fact that you are already happy or fulfilled or at peace or just okay in any moment that you're distracted from your thoughts proves it's just your thoughts making you unhappy, not your appearance. So if you want to be happy, if you want to lose your anxiety, shame, depression, loneliness, and all of that, stop looking for your happiness out there. Stop trying to change the external world in order to get rid of the thoughts in your head. Okay? Does that make sense? I hope it helps. I hope it was clear. And please feel free to write comments below to ask me if you have any further clarifications that you're looking for, because I suspect questions will come up. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you around. Bye. Hello again. 
If you found my video helpful or you enjoyed it, I welcome you to click on one of the videos below as you might find them helpful as well. Or if you want to make sure you never miss another video of mine again, you can click the subscribe button over there. And if you want my free ebook, you're welcome to click the free ebook button over there. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you around. Bye.